Nerd! 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 A nerd. I'm a nerd. You know you're a nerd. You've been a nerd your entire life. There's nothing wrong with being a nerd. You're a nerd. I'm not a nerd. What happens when a pilot sits on NBC's shelf for seven years? Well, I'd imagine like a fine wine, it only gets better with time. This is The Pilot is Dead. Hello, welcome to The Pilot is Dead. My name is Matt Dressel, and each week we take a look at a show that didn't quite make it past that crucial first episode. Today we're traveling back to 1989 to look at the sitcom The Nerd, where I'm guessing the pitch was, hey, what if a nerd was born a total sociopath? The show starred this guy and this woman, and I'm not going to lie, I have absolutely no idea who they are. But let's take a look. Okay, so John Dye was best known for his role in Touched by an Angel, that CBS show that you saw commercials for all the time but you had absolutely no idea who was watching it. That and Walker, Texas Ranger. And how you doing, little partner? Fine. And it's Little Visitor now. <laughs> Walker told me I had AIDS. But do you know who was watching Diagnosis Murder? Me. Did you know that Dick Van Dyke and his son Barry Van Dyke solved crimes every week for 178 episodes in five TV movies? The show also featured appearances by Jerry Van Dyke, Carrie Van Dyke, and so many other Van Dykes that you gotta wonder, did Dick Van Dyke have kids just so he could cast Diagnosis Murder? I also watched Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, but I only watched it for Jane Seymour. Jane. The nerd also starred Harley Jane Kozak, who was in the original Parenthood and... Nothing. She was in nothing else. Moving on. The Nerd was originally a stage play that premiered in the UK and had Rowan Atkinson as the lead character. I believe we have a clip. It was so acclaimed that it moved over to Broadway, where Mark Hamill took the role of the titular nerd. Guys and dolls, we're just a bunch of crazy guys and dolls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's pretty obvious at this point I don't actually have a clip from the original Broadway show. But if you go on YouTube, you can see countless high school productions trying their best to do this play. And if you think for one second that I'm going to make fun of children trying their best, then you do not know me very well. Because there are plenty of adults out there too. Rick. Do you know what this is? So two seasoned actors, Rowan Atkinson and Mark Hamill, paved the way for this play. So to make this work, NBC was going to need a truly seasoned comedic actor. They were going to need somebody who really understood comedic timing. But that guy said no, so they went with the guy from Amityville Horror 3D. I've got to confront it! <laughs> Now, I know I've been hard on NBC in the past, and this time will be no different. Now, don't get me wrong. NBC was airing some groundbreaking television at the same time that they were doing Where's Rodney, Puchinski, and A Little Bit Strange. But they were also airing this for seemingly no reason. Keep in mind, NBC had this on the shelf for seven years before they decided to air it, and they already knew that it was canceled. Was it worth the wait? <laughs> Okay, so the nerd starts off. Twenty minutes later. Two hours later. So let's meet our two main characters, Willem and Tansy, two instantly iconic names that roll right off the tongue. They're currently waiting for guests for a dinner party. What was that? Was that them? That was the refrigerator. It sounded like it was down the street. No, I looked. It's still in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I always confuse my refrigerator with my front door. Hey, hon, can you get that? That was just the refrigerator. What am I worried about here? The dinner's cooking, the Walgraves are coming, the wine's at room temperature, heck, even the room's at room temperature. Wait a minute. Dinner with the boss? Promotion on the line? And this is a comedy? I'm sure I'll be fine. Unless... something or someone 
comes to ruin their night with a series of comedic hijinks, each one more absurd than- Why haven't we cut away? Perfect night. You remember the guy? Oh, I know I told you this, didn't I? Before I met you, I was staying with these friends in these apartment buildings and they caught on fire. I was almost dead. But at the last minute, this complete stranger runs into this burning building. He finds me, carries me out through the flames. When I came to in the hospital, he was gone. But, but I tracked him down and I wrote him a letter and I said, thanks, <laughs> I guess. And I promised him that as long as I was alive, I would do anything for him. So you forgot to tell your wife about the time that you were in a burning building, passed out, a guy saved your life, who you never saw again, but you sent him a letter because you somehow have his address, and in that letter you said thank you, <laughs> I guess, and that for as long as you're alive, you will give him anything he asks for, and he just now tracked you down on the night of your big dinner with your boss? Yeah, I buy it. So the boss arrives, and... Oh my god! It's someone I actually know! <laughs> That's right, it's beloved character actor M. Emmett Walsh. You probably remember him from his classic role in the film Blood Simple, but I'll always remember him as Jill's dad on Home Improvement. M. Emmett Walsh, everyone. The M stands for, my god, what are you doing in this show? So Willem makes it very clear to Tansy that tonight has to go off without a hitch. Walgrave is my next step to, to better things, bigger clients. Maybe my own company in five years, or four if dessert's good. So it's time to meet the nerd. We're seven minutes in and I can only imagine, given the build-up, that his entrance will be pretty wacky. Whoa! Hey! Come on in! Who is this man? Or he'll just sit at the table. Comedy! So most of the comedy in this pilot is derived from the fact that Rick Stedman... Rick Stedman? You're Rick Stedman? No, no, no you are! Well, that's what I thought! I was gonna say! Anyway, Rick Stedman... I didn't think there'd be more than one Rick Stedman. <laughs> yes, we get it. It wasn't funny the first time. So Rick Stedman... Well, excuse me! ...is insufferable. Just a little while ago, these were all inside some birds. Now look, is it like... <laughs> ...and dumb. Oh, thank God that's over. Pretty well. Nope, we're still doing it. So the boss decides to leave because, obviously, until this. Isn't there anything I can do to make you guys stay? No! Oh, that's too bad because we were just about to start the games. Games? The man couldn't make it through three minutes of dinner with Rick Stedman. You're Rick Stedman? Shut up! Up. Well, excuse me, princess. At this point, I should let you know that we have 10 minutes left in this pilot, and I kid you not, eight minutes of that will be playing games. First up, a classic party game for five-year-olds. The first person says, I went on a trip and I brought, and then he says something that goes with an A. Hey, I know this game. I used to play with chips. Chips? Well, he was my best friend. <laughs> You can actually hear the audience think, wait, that's not funny. It's during these scenes that the problem with Rick, the nerd's character, becomes very clear. I went on a trip and I uh, brought an apple and a basket and a candlestick and a duck. Okay, Rick. Okay. <laughs> and a map of the area. <laughs> it's not that he's a nerd. Nerds are smart. Nerds like weird things. Sure, they can be grating at times, but they also have heart and some endearing qualities. In this show, the nerd is a blank slate. They can have him say or do anything and chalk it up to the fact that he's a nerd. But last time I checked, nerds weren't this dumb. Rick, what are you doing? Uh, well, maybe you guys can remember all these, but I sure can't. Or this sociopathic. There you go. <laughs> I know I showed that without any context, but trust me, context will not make that funny. Or this. Okay, to catch you up, the nerd created a game where you put a bag on your head, you spin around with your fingers in your ears, hum loudly, and then... well... So, uh, where do you keep your Bible? I don't think we have a Bible. Why not? Don't you believe in God? Why don't you believe in God? What is this show? I don't know if I've ever watched a show that acts like a standard sitcom and then at the end abandons its premise completely and says, but hey, have you heard about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, long story short, no they haven't. The boss leaves, the wife goes to bed, and the nerd decides he's going to be sticking around for a while. Except that he won't. Oh yeah, one last thing. What is, what is this? Oh, that'd be the King James version. I 
Uh, I was just... I was just saying thanks, Rick. Oh, no problem. Good night, Rick. Sleep tight. The important lessons in life are learned at home from The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And that's the nerd. You know, it should be noted that in the original British play, there was a twist at the end where you found out that the nerd was actually an actor who was hired to teach the main character a lesson. Would the show have gone this route? I guess we'll never know. But most of all, it's just really unfortunate that a beloved British play received such a horrible American adaptation. But luckily for us, that would never happen again. Have so you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> See you next time. Hi, this is Steve Urkel, Dan. All you have to do is hitch up your pants, bend your knees, and stick out your pelvis. I'm telling you, baby, it's better than that. <laughs>